Welcome to the Thread to Men podcast. I'm Taylor coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and this is episode two. Um, so it's been a few weeks since I made my first upload, um, but I've been busy. Um, so the first thing I had to show you is a project bag that I treated myself to from Darn Yarn, Minnesota. And it's much, you might not be able to see, I didn't know in buying it, but it's like glitter gold sparkle. It's really nice. And inside I have my stasis pullover, which I've been working on. Here's the bottom bit of the body that I've started. And... I switched over to knitting the sleeves just to give my hands a little bit of a break using the same needles. And I went ahead and ordered um, more Chiagu 9 inch circulars because I find that they are the most enjoyable when I knit socks. I don't get the the line from switching over the Yens or doing the magic knit. I forget what that's called. You know what I'm saying? And you can see that I use little progress keepers to mark my increases so that I can easily count uh, back to the previous one. And that is really good. Um, I only wish I could try the sleeves on more easily because these nine inch circulars only go so far over my. And, um, yeah, so I'm hoping to finish this project up before the Rhinebeck Schubermull Festival in October, and I'm looking forward to working on this some more. Um, it's, August, it's the end of August right now, so I think that those six or seven weeks are plenty of time to work on that, since it is mostly stocking it stitch left. Um, at least still the yoke. There's like a little bit of a pattern, but I really enjoy color work, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, all right, so the other two things I have to show in terms of work in progress, I actually didn't bring around here. One is just a, a sock. I'll show you my socks next time because um, I didn't get to grab those, but uh, works in progress are just my pullover, because I have a couple other sweaters I want to cast on, but since I plan to wear that at a specific date, I'm just focusing on this thing alone, and then I'll come back to those when I'm in work control, because I always forget that. This here is a skein of Shetland wool that I spun from a braid that I bought at the Port Fiber store in Portland, Maine. And the color is really hard to capture, um, depending on like the light. It is a bit more green than you might see here, um, but I strove, strove, is that the word? I was striving to spin this skein of yarn in the same grist as the Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. Um, so I bought a cone for a sweater that I'm going to be making soon and I just took a little bit off and brought it down to my wheel to check against as I was spinning. And these cones, I mean I wouldn't buy every color that I knit in Jameson in a cone, um, but they're so much more affordable than buying a little can of five grand skein. It's like half the price. So um, if I were working on a lot, a lot of color work, I would probably buy like a few in colors that I love the most because I'll use them again and again. But that black, I mean, the sweater's mostly black, so um, I think that this might get me enough black to make two black sweaters as long as they have a lot of color work in them, um, but we'll see. I'm thinking about using these two colors together. Um, I'm not sure about the contrast of them, but I'm thinking of using the two colors together. Oh yeah, I'm sure that'd be great. Um, 
for knitting these little moth mitts. Underwing mitts. And I discovered this pattern from Eva's podcast, The Charm of It. Eva? Eva? Man, I need to write stuff down because I can't remember who is who when I get into the camera. Um, but these are just so, so adorable, and I feel like I just want to make them for everyone else. And moths are like becoming a theme here. So there's that. So I finished this up. It only took uh, about a week. And I immediately started spinning some of the Cormo cross fleece that I bought back in May. I've been prepping uh, both fleeces. They're both washed. Um, one's gray, one's white. And I've been dyeing the white fleece pound by pound. Um, so far, I've done about three batches of different foraged dye bats, dabs. Um, but with the gray one, I haven't yet over dyed it because I just, it's so like perfect. I'm like afraid of ruining it. The white one is a little tippy. It's not as fun to work with. So if I ruin a pound, <laughs> which I have not yet done, but if I did, I'm like, whatever. Like, I can handle that loss. Um, but this fleece, I've just been combing into little nests of fiber and you can see that it's a little um, heathered. The tips of the fiber are a little bleached at the end and so it kind of gives it really a lot of depth to the hairs. Okay so I spun a sample skein and I had it um, prepped on my mini knotty and it looked great and I like posted the photo of that to Instagram but then I immediately uh, wound it up into a ball and then knit a tiny little swatch to see how it knits up. Um, and this too, I I really did spin it as thin as I could without it being a lace weight because I I'm just a little intimidated to knit lace weight. I don't knit lace. I'm not a super fancy lady, so um, I was. I was aiming to spin this in something like a fingering weight um, or something like the two ply jumper in case I just want another color that I can work into my color work. So I re gained this up. I actually used a 12 inch record cover to like make a smaller skein because I thought after swatching, um, you know, my regular size skein might be kind of clunky. This is like, it's like a tiny skein. So you can see that it looks kind of rustic, even though I did a worsted prep and there's not hardly any naps or noils in it. Um, and it fluffs like mad. Fluffs, I don't think is a technical term, um, but um, bloom. I haven't even soaked this or um, whacked it or Whatever, I literally took it off the bobbin onto the nitty knotty. And if you're not sure what a nitty knotty is, it's this little thing here where you you transfer the yarn off the bobbin of your wheel onto this to make it into a skein. And when I took it off the nitty knotty, it was like perfectly evenly spun. And I don't think that's to my credit, although I am developing as a spinner. Um, I I think that this fiber is just really, really, really forgiving. <laughs> it's um, really light. I've never spun anything this light, and it's really squishy, so or squishy, bouncy. I actually didn't really tie this off when I made it because I didn't want to lose the whole look of the heritage. But you can see that I'm holding it here. So I'm not sure, I mean obviously this is not enough yarn to make a real project. I could work it into some color work. If I had maybe two or three times as much as this, I could probably uh, knit these mitts in this color. Maybe, oh that could be contrasting enough. I like the idea of doing 
um, these mitts in a gray and black over black and white just because they'll be on my hands and I do white and might start to look dirty. Um, but I'm excited to have this fun. I'm a little, because I have now two sweaters planned in fingering weight yarn, I think I might need a break from fingering weight yarn for sweaters, but I'm saying that now just out of fear. I don't really know if that's how I'm going to feel even when I'm done with the second. So I'm holding off on spinning this uh, fleece in fingering weight, and I don't, other than that, I don't know why. I just don't know what it wants to be. I probably have, I probably have like seven or eight pounds of it. When I prep this fiber, it is so clean that my waist ratio is like 5% at, at most. Like my other Cormo Cross white fleece is like 50% waist because the tips are breaking off and there's seems to be a little bit more second cuts to that. So I'm thinking I can, obviously I can spin as much of this as I want in any weight I want, which is a new, I just don't know what to do first. So I'm going to focus on spinning this sweater. I'm going to knit these mitts as a little break. I have another sweater planned in some hand spun I also didn't bring down here. Um, that is a a Christmas surprise for nobody that watches this, so I'll probably show you that next week as well. Um, I think that there might have been like over three weeks between recordings, and I um, was shooting to do every other week, but things just get in the way. So maybe next week I'll post again and show you the things that I have planned that I wasn't worthy to shoot right now. Um, other than that, I'm excited that I'm planning to go to Rhinebeck this year. I wasn't sure I was going to because finding a place to stay is a little like stressful. Everything's already booked up. And then I like, uh, we recently went to stay with my friend in Brooklyn um, on our way up to Maine. And that was so nice that I was like, oh my God, why don't we just stay there again on our way up to Rhinebeck? So, probably be heading up there on Friday, um, staying overnight, and then driving the two hours distance to the festival that morning, and then doing like Brooklyn, New York, um, or Manhattan on Sunday. I recently um, saw a photo of some like Brooklyn tweed shelter yarn in a color that was like so appealing to me. Like, when it was knit up, it looked almost, not that it looked woven, but, like, it reminded me of this woven tweedy fabric that I really, really like and have destroyed. <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh, I just want to knit in that yarn, that thing, that color. And I'm like, I just, let me just get to New York, and I'll find a store, and it'll have all the Brooklyn tree tweed, and I can squish it and smell it and see it in person and buy me some. Um... And at the same time, I clearly don't need any more yarn. And when I think about knitting with yarn, I want to knit a sweater. And buying sweater quantities is an investment. And I just, I don't know. I need someone to tell me, yes, do it. It's worth it. Everyone should have a Brooklyn Tweed shelter sweater. Or, hey, you know, Brooklyn Tweed is great, but, you know, it's not any better than what you might spin. Or I want opinions on that. Um, so if you have them, give them. If you think I should start out small, please tell me because I need a reason to buy one skein. I'm sick of buying one skein. I don't want one skein of anything ever again because I just can't figure out what to do with it. And then it sits around and I feel guilty and I'm like, what do you want to be? I don't know. And there's that. Um, so let me know what your thoughts are. Shelter yarn because I'm really excited about that. I know also that at the festival there's going to be a million and one other things that I might want to invest my money into. And um, when I get to the festivals, I'm like very frugal. I'll buy like a fleece or two and that's, that's all. Um, 
so it's Brooklyn Tweed or Stains of the Festival. I'm not planning to buy a fleece again this year there because um, it didn't turn out well for me last year. <coughs> Don't know why I said last year. Well, with that, I guess I should probably go. I feel like I rushed through this episode, getting through all the things. Um, now my neighbor's walking their dog. Shippy. We can relax. She only gets this way when I she, when she's on my lap. <laughs> she normally doesn't care if someone is walking their dog outside. Um, I think she has. She can see them better than I see it. Um, so this is Starship Enterprise. We adopted her, um, I don't know, like four years ago or so. And she's not young. She's not old. Uh, she's a mixed breed of Chihuahua and Poodle and some kind of terrier. And we rescued her through, like, PetFinder.com, which I'm always, like, a little skeptical of, like, how could a dog this cute be available for adoption? <laughs> or, like, is there some, like, you know, mutt breeder out there that's like, oh, I'll make tons of money selling dogs on the internet instead of in person. Anyway, my person is way different than my person. Um, but, yeah, she is great. She's quiet for the most part, which is really nice to know. And she gets along well with the cats. She's very, like dominant and the cats rule the house so she's a good girl with all these um with the storm happening in houston and all these animals potentially being displaced i'm like oh maybe they maybe there's a little dog that needs a home to call home <laughs> and i'm like internally contemplating whether i should get another dog and i know that this is probably a really bad idea at least for our household um because Three pets is a lot in a smaller home. Um, I justify having two cats because we have two floors and two floors, two cats. That, that's enough. Um, so even though I bring in fosters sometimes, um, they don't stay very long because they're kind of bored. So and yes, I think only two dogs gives me space for a foster kitty for my children. Um, this weekend, we're planning to trap the last cat in our colony that lives outside. When we moved here, there were um, there were a couple kittens, and I was like, where did these kittens come from? And there were a few other older cats, and I started feeding them and then trapping and spaying or neutering them and releasing them back out. Um, so all of them are now altered, which is good, because that summer, I think that six cats would have turned into 36 cats. Um, but I think our colony is only about 8 to 10 now. Um, they come and they go. And there's one cat that was washed in a trap and take care of all the others. And so she just knows better than to get into that cage, that trap, to eat. Um, she will live outside our front, our back door, our kitchen door, like all day long. And she's always there. She's always there. But for some reason, she's just impossible to control. So this weekend, we are definitely, definitely, definitely going to do everything we possibly can to try to get her trapped so that we can spay her before she has her at least fourth litter of kittens. Um, the last three litters I've been able to take in and find homes for is really great sometimes only like one or two of them survive because of the time of year that she has them which is really unfortunate um, but yeah she's a good dog she's just doing the best she can and it's it's really hard to live out there um, the streets of Baltimore are not so good a place to be for anyone to be um, yeah so cats and dogs, and yarn, and fiber, and stuff, and 
running back. If you somehow watch this video, because who watches these? <laughs> um, but if you somehow watch this video and you are going to Ryan Beck and you want to uh, say hey and chat about whatever, like let me know and I'll do that. Um, and until then, or next week, I will see you soon. Bye.